Kenya's coral reefs, once vibrant pillars of marine life and coastal livelihoods, are fighting for survival against the twin threats of climate change and human activity. Local communities, scientists and conservationists are turning to coral restoration, a hands-on method of cultivating new reefs from fragments of resilient corals. This innovative approach is not just about bringing back a threatened ecosystem. It's a powerful story of sustainable development, reviving fish populations and bolstering the ecotourism economy. This is where the blue economy truly begins, on the ocean floor. Join us as we dive deeper into the world of coral reef restoration on the Kenyan coast. Coral reef restoration is, is so important these, day, these days with, with climate change the, the way it is. Uh, we have two ways of working with both passive and active uh, restoration. Active way of dealing with things is um, actually planting coral in the sea and so that's what we're doing. Uh, that's chat, that, you know, climate change is, is real. We lost about 30% of our coral early, early last year and um, yeah, that, that um, you know, it, it's a, a constant challenge with the, with, with the climate change, with the rise, rising sea temperatures and things like that. But we're, we're finding ways, we're looking at the, the resilience of the coral, we're looking at which coral is more resilient than others, measuring the types of coral uh, and researching the types of coral that are more resilient and then often planting them in the deeper, deeper areas where they have more chance of survival uh, as, as the sea temperature is, is rising. So it's, it's getting a holistic approach to the conservation, marine conservation in general, and improving livelihoods. Without, without improved livelihoods, I don't believe con cons conservation can work. Um, so it's, it's all about the community, getting them on board, healthy ocean, healthy community. The biggest stress is about uh, global warming, especially um, from uh, this up season, March, and you now it comes April. After then, you see the bleaching. That's what had made us now to, to come down again. So that's why we come with the idea now to replant more and more corals, so that even if uh, some will die, but uh, we have discovered that there are some of coral resilience in between, so they can do better. This uh, coral farming has impacted the community because we are more relying on marine coral fish. And uh, the, 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 the place had been uh, much more of a breeding site. And the coral fish which we have been depending on has come plenty and the catch has been ex exceeded in our area. This has been giving the, the fishermen uh, much more income, whereby also for this community has been doing well. Coral restoration farming is just helping the population of 
marine creatures because where there is no coral, there is no fish. We are making the coral nursery tables and we are making the coral nursery plugs. We are making the artificial coral bricks and then we have to drill it and then we have to join them to get the artificial coral structure. And then after, then we have to carry all these stuff to the ocean. And after taking them to the ocean now, we have the activity of finding coral of opportunities. And after finding the coral of opportunity, we are taking to where we have just put our table and where we have put our coral nursery plugs. After the coral nursery plug, they have neutralized. We, they have stayed in the ocean for 14 days before we do nursing of the coral on top of the coral nursery plant. As the coral will stay on the table for six months, then when the nursery is ready now, even the structures, they will be ready because they will have stay more than one month. Then out planting now becomes easy. It is, it is one way that we human beings are helping the ecosystem, especially where we have the the situation where the ecosystem is like degraded, it cannot regenerate or recover by itself. So coral restoration uh, helps that helps in that we human beings uh, just in a, not hundred percent, but we help uh, through the farming. We give the opportunities the opportunities to coral coral fragments that maybe are broken down on the floor. We give them another opportunity for them to live and grow. We don't just require the corals to be resilient, that is ecological resilience. We also need the people to be resilient, that is social resilience. So the question is at the end of the day, if uh, we need to achieve both of them, we need to achieve uh, the corals to be okay and resilient and the coastal communities that depend on them to be resilient. So in a case where um, there's, we have we, are, we lack social resilience, that is the coastal communities don't have resilience, they won't find, and here on the other side, the ecological resilience is down, that one will be an imbalanced system because there will not be maybe the fish and this, the fish and the organisms that they depend on, that one will affect their livelihood. And that's our story from the Kenyan coast. For more stories like these, be sure to subscribe to the African Farming Journal. Don't forget to like and share this video as we grow our community and work to nourish the African continent.